So acalabrutinib um, and BGB-3111 are um, pseudo-next generation, and the reason I say they're pseudo-next generation is um, they're really not next generation drugs. They have exactly the same mechanism of action. They bind to the, the active site cysteine um, and uh, they covalently modify the drug. The difference between these two drugs um, and abrutinib is the much more restricted kinome. Now, whether that's good or bad, we have to know. I mean, it should reduce some of uh, the, uh, we know that uh, alcalabrutinib and BGB-3111 don't interfere with antibody-dependent cell-mediated cytotoxicity in culture, so should play better in vivo with uh, monoclonal antibodies. That has to be proven. We don't know that's the case. Um, uh, they, uh, there should be fewer T-cell effects um, with uh, the uh, alcalabrutinib and BGB-3111. Um, uh, the um, uh, but uh, we we know that they uh, can achieve very high levels of occupancy of BTK and are highly active um, in uh, in CLL. Um, but uh, you know it's hard. You know, if you had the two drugs at the same time in the laboratory and say, oh, which one am I going to pick? You might have picked one of the others, but once the brutinib is there, um, it becomes pretty hard to displace unless there's a clearly differentiating factor, um, and that might be in combination with drugs. Um, and, uh, you know, limited course, limited duration therapy in combination might be more effective with one or the other of the uh, BTK inhibitors.